Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Abbas and uh, I am one of the assistant professors in pediatric department Akhtar Said Medical College. I hope that uh, you are doing well. Um, our topic uh, of today is febrile convulsions or febrile seizures. So definition. Uh, febrile seizures are the seizures that occur between the age of 6 month and 60 month with a temperature of 38 degree centigrade or higher. These seizures are not as the result of central nervous system infection or meningitis or any metabolic imbalance and that occur in the absence of a history of prior afebrile seizures. What does it mean? That uh, these seizures which we call febrile seizures are present at a specific age group definitely associated with, with fever but these uh, are not associated with meningitis and not associated with any metabolic abnormality and uh, not primarily associated with the epilepsy uh, however that can lead to epilepsy in later life uh, which we call complex febrile seizures. We will discuss them later, but not primarily due to epilepsy. Simple febrile seizures. A simple febrile seizure is primary generalized, really tonic-clonic uh, attack associated with fever, lasting for a maximum of 15 minutes and uh, not recurrent within a 24-hour period. So what does it mean like uh, usually they are generalized tonic clonic and associated with fever but uh, less than 50 minute of duration and uh, there would be no second fit within that particular 24 hour. These are simple febrile seizures but uh, the second form which is complex febrile seizure is more prolonged more than 15 minutes and they are focal and uh, or recurs within 24 hour period. So multiple uh, seizures may be present within 24 hour period. There is another entity called febrile status epilepticus is a febrile seizure lasting for more than 30 minutes despite using the conventional anti-epileptic medication during the seizure. Febrile seizures are most common causes of childhood convulsive disorder and occur in 3 to 4 percent of children. These are twice as common in boys as girls. So they are more common in boys than girls. More than 90% of febrile convulsions are generalized and they are of uh, less than 5 minute duration and occur early in an illness, for example, otitis media, pharyngitis, adenitis, or UTI. A strong family history of febrile convulsions in siblings and parents suggests a genetic predisposition. An autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance may be present. So that is the reason we usually ask uh, the family history of the child presenting to us uh, in the emergency with febrile convulsions. 2-4% to of febrile seizures lead to epilepsy or recurrent non-febrile seizures and chances are pretty much higher in case of complex febrile seizures as I, I already told uh, in the uh, definition section. Chances are very much low in simple febrile seizures like around 1% uh, so it is reassuring for the parents uh, whose child is having simple febrile seizures but chances are higher in the recurrent febrile seizures uh, you can see 4% and in case of camp, complex febrile uh, seizures like 6%. Similarly, the child, uh, the child having uh, neurodevelopmental delay or developmental delay or neurodevelopmental abnormalities would be having a higher risk of subsequent epilepsy like 33% later in life. Chances of getting epilepsy are also high in focal complex febrile seizures and uh, there is a family history of epilepsy 29%, 18% respectively. And if there is a less than one hour gap between the fever and the occurrence of the febrile seizure, 
then the chances would be 11% for subsequent epilepsy. So what are the risk factors for recurrence of febrile seizures? Mm, major risk factor is the age. If the age of the child is less than one year, lesser the age, the more chances of getting second, third, or multiple attacks of febrile uh, seizures. If the duration of fever, your know, first attack is less than 24 hours, there are higher chances of getting second and third and multiple seizures. If the fever is like 38, 39, mild fever, and the child is having febrile convulsions, the child would be having um, likely more chances of recurrence of febrile seizures later in life. There are some other factors as well, like family history of febrile seizures. The children who have that family history usually presents, usually uh, they present with the multiple febrile seizures and up till five years of age. And if the family history of epilepsy is there and if the febrile seizures are complex and uh, daycare or male gender or lower serum sodium, these are the factors for recurrent febrile seizures. Even if there is no risk factor, still the chances of recurrent febrile seizures is 12%. If there is one risk factor, the chances are 25 to 50%. If there are two risk factors, the chances are 50 to 59 percent. Or if there are three or more, the chances are 73 to 100 percent for recurrent febrile convulsions. Definitely, meningitis should be ruled out even in a child who has previous history of febrile seizures. So, the following are the indications of CSF examination in a suspected case. If the child is under 18 months of age, um, definitely we will think of uh, doing CSF examination. We will keep our threshold very low for doing lumbar puncture. If the recovery is very slow, no other cause of fever is found, close follow-up is not possible. Prolonged febrile seizures may cause mesial temporal sclerosis so that can uh, cause damage to the brain and may be responsible for later febrile fits or epilepsy. Common causes of uh, fever in the febrile convulsions are mostly viral upper respiratory tract infections, acute otitis media, mastoiditis, pharyngitis, adenoiditis, urinary tract infections. So, for diagnosis, definitely a good history, a good clinical examination, and uh, after assessing and ruling out meningitis clinically, we need uh, also investigations like complete blood count, especially for the total leukocyte count, white cell count, the blood sugar, the blood sugar, if blood sugar is low, we need to give a bolus of glucose and dextrose and if the calcium is high, we need to correct the calcium, phosphorus, urea and electrolyte imbalance if electrolyte imbalance is there, we need to correct it as well. Lumbar puncture is done if the diagnosis is in doubt. We have already discussed. And EEG. EEG is electroencephalogram or electroencephalogram. is indicated if febrile seizure is complicated. If child presents to you in emergency with the fits, in a convulsive state, definitely first thing uh, uh, I think should be the oxygen, ABC. And uh, after oxygen, lateral position to avoid any aspiration. And then uh, you will go to put an IV line and you will give some anti convulsive like dizepam, midazolam, and uh, sometime we need phenobarbiton as well. And uh, after controlling the seizures, we need to lower the temperature by giving uh, sometimes uh, intravenous paracetamol or paractal paracetamol along with tepid spudging. Um, if you suspect some bacterial infections, definitely an empirical antibiotic is started intravenously. And family should be reassured in case of simple febrile seizures, especially because these are not uh, the cause for uh, any uh, development delay and these are not the cause of any epilepsy later in life so less than one percent or almost one percent chances so 
coming to the prophylactic anticonvulsants uh, these are not indicated in uncomplicated febrile convulsions however indicated if the febrile seizures are complicated or prolonged also indicated if medical reassurance fails to relieve the anxiety of parents parents are very much worried then drugs like diazepam or phenobarbitone are used for prophylaxis sometimes prognosis is generally good in simple febrile convulsions but infant with the complex febrile seizures may develop epilepsy later in life as i already told in first slide about 6% chance and there is another slide i have told you the chance as well and about 50 to 75% of recurrence takes place within uh, one year of initial seizure after the first year and about 90% occur within two and a half years recurrence rate can be influenced by intermittent use of rapid acting anti epileptic drugs or continuous prophylactic treatment sometimes thanks thank you very much and if you have any question you can ask under the comment section in uh, on the youtube channel thank you very much